IFRS 16 leases, measurement, initial measurement of the lease liability in the books of the lessee. This presentation will focus on the variable future value that needs to be considered in the calculation of the present value of the lease payments. This is an extract from Appendix A in IFRS 16. It deals with the definition of lease payments and I specifically refer you to the, the portion dealing with the residual value guarantee as that will be our guidance towards determining the future value. For the lessee, lease payments also include amounts expected to be payable by the lessee under residual value guarantees. Lease payments do not include payments allocated to non-lease components of a contract unless the lessee elects to com combine non-lease components with lease components. So for now, the focus is on what I've highlighted, the amount expected to be payable by the lessee under a residual value guarantee. Now I refer you to the definition of residual value guarantee. That is a guarantee made to a lessor by a party unrelated to the lessor that the value of an underlying asset at the end of the lease will be at least a specified amount. In example, class example 7, scenario 3, the residual value guarantee is illustrated. Please refer to IFRA 16, paragraph 20C, 27C and read those definitions again in Appendix A that I've just referred to. The initial measurement, remember I'm busy with initial measurement and the focus is now on determining the future value variable. Of the lease liability includes the expected amounts payable by the lessee. That is the key term that you need to see. It's the amount payable by the lessee under a residual value guarantee. So how it would work is at commencement date of the lease, the lessee and the lessor should agree on a residual value guarantee amount relating to the underlying asset. That represents the value that both parties expect the underlying asset will be worth at the end of the lease term. But now it can happen that due to the use of this asset, the fair value of that asset can change and differ from this agreed upon residual value. So this value, the residual value guarantee, should then be compared to the estimated fair value of the asset at the end of the lease term. If the estimated fair value of the asset is less than the residual value guarantee amount agreed upon. The lessee will have to pay the difference to the lessor. Why? The lessee and the lessor agreed that this asset will be worth a specific amount at the end of the lease term. If this asset no longer is worth that amount, the lessee still needs to give this asset back but because its value is less than the agreed upon residual value guarantee, the difference will have to be paid in by the lessee. So what would the lessor get back at the end of the lease term? An asset worth a specific fair value and a cash amount paid by the lessee of the difference between that fair value and the agreed upon residual value guarantee. That amount that the lessee needs to pay in, that extra payment, is then the amount expected to be payable under the residual value guarantee and will be included in the future value of the lessee. It can now happen that this estimated fair value of the underlying asset at the end of the lease term increases above the agreed upon residual value. And in an instance like this, the lessor, the lessor can then sell this asset to a third party at this higher value. So he'll get the asset back from the lessee 
worth more than this residual value guarantee amount, the lessee do not have to pay in any amount. He just needs to give that asset back to the lessor at that residual value guarantee amount. But the lessor can then take that asset, sell it at somebody, to somebody else at the higher amount, which would then result in an extra amount that the lessor is entitled to. That additional amount that the lessor can get from a third party represents the unguaranteed residual value for purposes of the lessor. Let's have a look at an example. Pippi Limited enters into a lease agreement with Benny to lease a bus. The contract is a lease per IFRS 60. The lease term is five years. Pippi Limited and Benny Limited agree at commencement date on a residual value guarantee. That is the value that they agree on that the bus will be worth at the end of the lease term. And that is the 500,000. Pippi Limited will pay to Benny an amount equal to the difference between this 500,000 and the fair value of the bus. So what do we need to look at? We have this residual value guarantee determined as 500,000 rand. Now we need to compare the estimated fair value of the asset to that residual value guarantee. If the fair value is less than the agreed upon residual value guarantee, Pippi will have to pay an amount to Benny because Pippi needs to give an asset back worth 500,000 Rand. If it's no longer worth 500,000 Rand, Pippi needs to pay in. If the fair value, however, is higher than the agreed upon residual value guarantee, Pippi will not have to pay in anything, but Benny could possibly then sell this asset to a third party at this higher fair value, which would result in an unguaranteed residual value for Benny. So let's have a look. On commencement date, let's say that the estimated fair value of the bus at the end of the lease term is the following. Now we need to determine based on these amounts what the fair value or the future value for the lessee and the future value for the lessor in terms of the variables that you have to input in your calculation have to be. At commencement date, if the expected fair value is 500,000 Rand, that is the same amount as the agreed upon residual value guaranteed. So the expected amount payable by the lessee is zero. They agreed that the asset should be worth 500,000. It is 500,000 Rand worth in terms of fair value. So no additional amount is payable by the lessee. The future value that we're going to use for the lessor's purposes will be the full 500,000 because that's the value of the asset the lessor will get back. Let's assume that the estimated fair value of the bus at the end of the lease term is 480,000. What is now the expected amount payable by the lessee? 480,000 is 20,000 Rand less than the agreed upon amount of 500,000. So the lessee is giving an asset back to the lessor worth 480,000, but they agreed on an asset value of 500,000. So the lessee will have to pay in an amount of 20,000. So the future value variable for the lessee will be 20,000 Rand. The future value for the lessor will still be the 500. Why? Where does he get his 500,000 from? He gets an asset worth 480,000 and 20,000 Rand cash from the lessee. So that is still his guaranteed residual value. Let's now assume that the estimated value of the bus at the end of the lease term is 530,000. How much will the lessee have to pay in? Nothing. 
that Lacey will now give an asset back worth 530000 which is more than the agreed upon residual value. So the future value for the lessee is zero because the lessee will not have to make a final payment. The future value, however, for the lessor is 530000 Being the 500000 residual value guaranteed, the amount that it was guaranteed by the lessee, plus a possible 30000 that they can get from selling it to a third party, but it's not guaranteed. It is therefore considered the unguaranteed residual value. So this example was there to illustrate what the future value variable for the lessee has to be and what the future value variable for the lessor has to be.